Hello and welcome. So in this video, I'm going to test and review one of the most interesting PC I've ever come across. So this is part of the HP Elite Desk lineup. This PC is in the refurbished marketplace. You can buy them so cheap. But when it comes to performance, surprisingly, these can keep up with some newer PCs as new as 9th, even 10th gen in some aspect. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a comparison between this PC and the later models like 6th, 7th, 8th and 9th gen 35 watt counterparts. I'm also going to review the hardware just to uh, demonstrate how HP made some really good hardware decisions to make it a good performer. I'm also going to run this through some benchmark and compare them with the other PCs I've mentioned earlier. And at the end, I'm also going to run some internet browsing capability test. So stick around. Now, before I touch upon the hardware, I should make you aware the PCs that we saw, they are modified to work even better than in a normal state. So there are some modifications we do to all machines, for example, changing the SATA SSD to NVMe, which is a three to five times faster. So it makes the whole um, operation of the computer much, much faster. And also since these are new, as you know, the more you use the SSD, the life gets shortened. So a new SSD means the machine will last you a long time. We also do other modification to all the machines, for example, um, changing the thermal paste, replacing the old ones, because this thermal paste has been there for years. Replacing therm thermal paste can reduce the temperature and improve the performance as well as the longevity. And lastly, in terms of power adapter, we use HP Originals only, not the off the market. Of the market one can have very obvious consequences like flickering display and they can also in the long term you know reduce the lifespan of your machine and we do usual cleanup for example take the dust of the cpu ventilation unit and there are some advanced uh, modifications we can do if you want for example uh, if you want to pair this up with better wi-fi 6 for better range uh, better connection stability as well as the security we can pair this up with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.3 card. And we can also um, use thermal pad for the SSD if you are interested. So this particular PC, we have done all the upgrades that we mentioned except for the thermal pad and uh, performance will reflect that. Now in terms of the hardware, if we start at the front, you will see there is an USB-C and there are also two USB-A. Now, having an USB-C at the front is a lifesaver sometime because no matter what phone you use, Android or iPhone, all of them, they have USB-C these days. Even um, small gadgets like smartwatch or AirPods, for example, they have USB-C cable. And more and more um, devices, they actually tend to have USB-C these days. So having one of these is a lifesaver. But one thing HP has been very generous with is to leave two USB-A at the front. If you look at the Dell or Lenovo, for example, which I hate, they only leave one. So if you have many devices to connect, um, you just have to look at the back. And whilst uh, cables are connected, finding the ports at the back is a mission because these PCs are so tiny. Now, if you look at the top of the machine, you will see these machines have a mesh case. And the area is quite big as well, so this ensures there's a lot of airflow inside because this CPU has, um, it is quite beefy. So plenty of airflow is very important. Now on the inside, the most obvious uh, thing we can see first is the inclusion of dual fan. So the fan on the right is for CPU cooling and the fan on the left is for SSD cooling. SSD cooling is important, which is ignored by most manufacturers because hot SSD can be slow uh, making the whole computer slow and also reduce the lifespan of the SSD. Now, if we pay attention to the assembly of the CPU cooling, you will see it is made of copper, which is about 60 to 70 percent more conductive than aluminium. But a lot of manufacturers, they have to spend about six times more on copper, so they cheap out and go for aluminium. So thank you, HP, for not cheaping out. It helps with the heat dissipation and performance. All right, let's start our comparison with the newer 35 watt counterparts by looking at the CPU graph. So if you look at the base clock chart, you will see the this PC has the highest base clock of any PCs, much higher than the next one. And that shows in real life. 
So every time I'm updating my PC after a fresh installation with the 35 watt ones, almost all the time I would notice uh, stutters in the sluggish behavior, but not with this one. Um, the possible reason is if you look at the 10th gen i5, you will see the base clock speed is 2.0 gigahertz. What does that mean? It means if all cores are triggered by something, then um, this PC is supposedly uh, able to maintain only 2.0 gigahertz of speed on all cores. But when it comes to the HP Elite Desk, it will be able to maintain, as per the Intel claims, the 3.19 gigahertz, which is much faster, which means this will be able to, and actually it does in real life, manage the update much faster than the other newer 35 watt counterpart. Now if you look at the turbo graph, you will see again, this is um, a very good contender. It actually um, surpasses i5 10th gen and then it, it is very close to 11th gen. So and this actually reflects in benchmark as well. So if you look at the single core benchmark from Cinebench as well as Geekbench, you will notice this PC actually manages to surpass even i5 10th gen, which is impressive. In the multi-core department, however, it only manages to beat the next generations of 7th gen i5, not the rest. But I wouldn't worry about that too much because this PC is positioned as office or school or college kind of PC. So let's do some irrelevant benchmarks on it. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and then I have run PC Mark 10. PC Mark 10 is more relevant because it only assesses the capability of the machine in terms of essential productivity and some of the digital content creation stuff, which is a much more focused uh, benchmark, I would say. So as you can, if you look at the score, you will see um, overall score, the 9th gen loses out to this older 6th gen PC. But obviously it's within the margin of error, so I would say they are neck and neck. Now if you look at the breakdowns, you will see uh, for the essential stuff, for example, app startup, video conferencing and web browsing and stuff like that, this PC manages to beat the other PC by about 168 points. And moving on to productivity like um, spreadsheet and writing and stuff like that, uh, the 9th gen does have a bit of an advantage by about 206 points. And then for the digital content creation like photo editing, video virtualization and rendering, I probably won't be using this, but it goes on to show this won by 77 points. So this PC, despite being so much older, is quite capable. So I'm going to start the speed test by doing my favorite thing, which is doing a startup speed test. So first thing I'm going to do is shut this machine off and we have our timer over there. So machine's completely turned off. Now we're going to start it. Three, two, one. Now let's see how long it takes for the machine to start up. Okay, nine seconds, which is impressive to be honest. All right, now I'm going to conduct a speed test comparison between a 9th gen PC, which came about three to four generation later, and the PC that we got. So what we would do is we would go ahead and then check the processor. Uh, to, for the purpose of fairness, both of these PCs, they're freshly set up and they got same set of applications installed. So neither is weighed down more than the other. As you can see on the left, we got 9400T and on the right, we got 6500. So the PC we have been discussing all this time. So remember the one on the left has more cores with six cores, but in terms of base clock and turbo clock, it is slightly less than this one. So despite being newer, we will see what kind of performance gain the newer one has. So I'm going to go ahead and then open my test folder and the same files are copied on both now let's start with the excel file so this is a very big excel file so this highlighted one excel test one so if you look at the size of this file you will see it's a 439866 on the right you will see this file here 439866 
So I'm going to click on both and see which one opens opens it faster. Three, two, one. Now this is going to take a bit of a time. This is a very big file. This includes all the job application data for all of the U United States. So let's see. But while we're waiting for this, we can go ahead and then we can try opening another document, see which one opens faster. So I'm going to try opening a Microsoft Word document. Three, two, one. Okay, they open almost as quick, which is a shame for the newer one should have opened much faster then our excel document is still trying to be opened so while this is opening we can go ahead and then try opening a picture three two one again almost the same speed and our excel is still trying to open okay this one opened this one far behind what a shame. Okay, see so you open now. So we're gonna go ahead and then try opening a 4K video. Three, two, one. Opened almost at the same time. So let's uh, test our multitasking capabilities. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave those running in the background. So as we observed, the Microsoft Excel opened much faster on the older PC, the ones we're talking about. What about a Microsoft Word document? Just to see if this problem is consistent throughout so we got this document the size itself is 2368 and this one 2368 as well so it's essentially the same file so i'm going to click three two one go that opened quicker what a shame now i'm going to let that run in the background i'm going to go ahead and then open another Microsoft Word three two one almost the same time no winner now I'm gonna go ahead and open another picture three two one almost the same time so no winner again now with the Excel when you open the second document it takes a bit of a time but nevertheless it tests the machine's capability so let's go ahead and open another excel three two one so this one open in the uh, background so let's go ahead and then put this in the foreground and then we'll try opening it again three two one sorry click happened at the wrong time let's try again apologies test three test three all right three two one i'm a right-handed person so left hand click is uh, really difficult so sometimes i miss so let's see which one opens okay that opened much faster so now we're gonna go ahead and then open a browser three two one this one loaded slightly quicker this one despite having a newer card somehow it was late what a shame anything else we could do um i think that's pretty much it so it proves how this machine despite being much older performs a lot better and in terms of the memory we will see this machine itself both of them they are running on 8 gigabytes so no memory and advantage in fact this one has better advantage because this one's running on higher speed memory but in real life it's not able to do better all right now talk about pushing things to the limit um, in front of me i have pushed this machine to the limit as you can see there are eight instances of Microsoft Edge Open and all of them they're playing a HD video and you can imagine how much processing power it takes to open all of these windows and also process all the graphics but this machine is doing just fine I'm yet to see any loading as you can see each individual video videos they are just plain 
and with the CPU just a proof I can see this is i5 6500 so this machine is doing just fine despite having so much stress now in terms of internet connectivity this machine is quite capable it is um, 2.4 gigahertz as well as 5 gigahertz dual band card and as you can see here um, it is reaching all the way up to 221 megabits per second so network today is good and then 221 megabits per second is a lot of speed uh, for a 4k playback you only need a machine um, with about 25 megabits per second capabilities so with 200 you can play above um, on a good connection 8 4k video streams so which is excellent as you can see we got the same machine i5 6500 and this is a very old card even then it is managing to pull such numbers which is excellent but in terms of using this in a congested network um, Moomimo uh, would help so if you want to upgrade it to Wi-Fi 6 or a later card or maybe even better Bluetooth this does come with Bluetooth 5.2 which is good enough for connecting your peripherals and stuff like that but if you want better Bluetooth 5.1 or 2 or 3 we can sort that for you so in this section I'm going to answer some questions in relation to power consumption, temperature as well as the machine's sound. Now in terms of the power consumption, 65 watt might put a lot of people off for unnecessary power consumption but as you can see in the idle state it draws about 2 to 5 watts which is very power efficient so you won't be paying extra for nothing. And in terms of the sound, um, in idle state the machine is quiet, you won't be able to hear it unless you're in a pin drop silence room, obviously this is physics, something is spinning, you will hear it if you're looking for it but time to time you will uh, hear a little bit of hissing but if you put the machine in extreme or maybe even moderate stress then fan might kick in and then you will hear the hissing noise so if that bothers you, don't buy it, buy something I don't I don't I don't think you will find something this powerful and quiet anyway and in terms of temperature control again under normal load it doesn't exceed over 60 which is very safe what I've done is I've over bolted the machine and put it in under extreme test and I've managed to reach about 50 to 52 watts even in that state temperature did not exceed um, exceed 90 which is safe because these machines they can handle all the way up to 100 in some cases so this machine ha handled even 90 uh, 50 watts of CPU processing power and 90 degrees of temperature is still carried on no shutdown no overheating so impressive overall all right now that we've done the test and the comparison yeah. it is very apparent that these 6th gen PC despite being so much older than the 9th gen it did have more upper hand than the other one and when you think about the fact that the 9th gen PC at this point in time will cost you about 80 to 100 pounds more it makes even more sense to go with the older one so I would comfortably suggest this for someone who does office based work you know office based work like sending emails receiving emails um, working through spreadsheets and Microsoft Word, calendars and things like that, doing some video calls here and there, it would be perfectly fine as you have observed. And this is also ideal for students, school and college students. Um, obviously they won't be holding on to this for very long. Once they graduate they'll be asking you for a gaming rig. So it would be a nice gift to them as well, they will appreciate it. Now, if you've liked the video, a subscription would be really wonderful. If you um, like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button so video gets more visibility. Doing videos like that takes a lot of work and effort and then your support would be much appreciated. Have a great day.